Why weren't you able to do that? There are almost 200 members of the President's party. You couldn't convince a single one of factor counseling restraint. And then the third factor that I mentioned was the fact that, and this is a litigable issue, uh, that there are serious issues with respect to process and whether, among other things, the House followed its own procedures, including the way the impeachment was authorized with the Speaker of the House as opposed to having a House of Representatives vote. So we shall see. The President is closing his case, and I wasn't called today. I was very thankful about that. And then we'll have two days of questions under the rule. We'll see where the impeachment goes from here. But let me bring it back as I close to say, all of this is happening under the rubric of this Constitution, which has only been amended 27 times, and we all know as citizens, 10 times right at the outset in 1791 with the Bill of Rights. And the 11th Amendment almost immediately thereafter because of the powerful federalism concern of the right and dignity of the states. So since that time, think of it, since the 18th century, there have only been 16 amendments and three had to be done because of the Civil War and giving real meaning to the vision of the Declaration of Independence of all of us as human beings having these inalienable rights. We talked about that for those who are in class today. Endowed by our Creator. So I say, Federalist Society, keep up the great work because guess what? All members of the House of Representatives now care about this document. They care about the words of the framers. And so we all walk away as winners in constitutional law, regardless of what happens, because the Federalist Society emphasis on our constitutional order is being unanimously upheld, including by the American people. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions and comments. members of the Federalist Society and other distinguished guests that Judge Starr is uh, willing to uh, answer some questions. So uh, do we have a question or a comment? Sure. All right, I see someone right here in the back. And uh, you may just have to uh, speak loud since we don't have a mic for you. Yes, I don't think that whatever happens will mark the end of a chapter. Uh, what I hope is that a number of senators uh, whose voices would be respected, shall I say, as being somewhat in the middle uh, in their statements as to how they vote, saying that it counts to me that for the first time in American history, there was no impeachment, no bipartisan support. And you might say, well, let's just rank politics. <clears throat> no, it reflects the structural principle that the Constitution articulates by virtue of the need for a two-thirds majority to actually convict and remove. So why should the House go forward with an impeachment unless it does have significant bipartisan support. And this is not the view of one political party. I can quote many different people from both parties, including the current Speaker of the House of Representatives one year ago saying that there needs to be a national consensus. In other words, a Richard Nixon kind of impeachment. 
And I think that's one of the lessons that we learned from President Clinton, from that impeachment, that it simply is not going to work if there is not significant bipartisan support reflecting a sense of the American people that the president just has to go.